remember this, the last time you were here was right before you won the Oscar for The Last King of Scotland. Yeah. And in a way, <laughs> I feel partly responsible for it. Like I, I, I can see that. A I lucky charm, that. if you will. I know. Can I rub you? you? Rub me all you like. Yes, go ahead. Oh, on a... So, well, it's very good to see you. How's everything going? You doing well? Everything's going really well. I'm really excited. When it's you a have, great time. When you have an Oscar, uh, do you, like, will you bring that to the set when you start a new production, just to let everybody know what's what? I don't think we talk about that much, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a do, nice thing. Does it give you a, like, for instance, I know a lot of actors will, they'll, they'll feel nervous before they, on the first day or first week or whatever. Do you have that anymore at all? You know, I get nervous all the time, and honestly, if I don't feel a little nervous, I don't think it's going to turn out to be great. You know, I, I think it, Interesting. it shows me that I, I'm doing something special, that something new, something fresh, you know. It it's makes you work it. harder when you, you're nervous or no? Yeah, I, I, I wish I, I, I thought as the years went by that the nerves would go away. But sometimes, even though I think I figured something out, the next time I'm doing something, I just get even more nervous than the time before. Have you ever not figured it out? Unfortunately, I think I have. You have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have not figured it out. You have not. <laughs> yes, you right, have you not know. figured it out. Yeah, huh? exactly. So this character, Bumpy, you play is a real guy. Well, was a real guy. He's deceased now. Yeah. Tell us about this story because it's very interesting. I mean, Bumpy Johnson was. Uh, he ran the mob in Harlem. Uh huh. Uh, and they called him Bumpy because he had a bump on his head, right? That is true. Yeah. Yeah. And well, he comes out of he comes out of Alcatraz, out of the prison. And he's trying to reestablish himself back in Harlem as the head of Harlem, as the godfather of Harlem against the Italian mob. And when we see it, we see him like meeting and intersecting, you know, the, the, the civil rights movement and the criminal world because his best friend in that time is, is uh, Malcolm X. And so we start to try to understand the movement of the community, where he can move his, where he can move his businesses and different things like that through his family, how he protects his family. You know, it's, it's, it's actually quite a great exploration of, of like trying to understand what, it like, what it's like to try to achieve the American dream by any means necessary. Yeah, right. Wow, that's something. This is a guy, this is your project, your executive producer yeah. and star of this project. Is this a guy you knew about for years, or did you find out about him shortly before this? I knew about him for years because I'd seen him in films, but uh -huh. I, I, I didn't understand the depth of, of his personality. So you'd seen actual footage of him? Speaking. No, no. Oh. I couldn't find. You know, he was very secretive, so I could only find like maybe like four or five photographs of him. Oh, I couldn't find anything to listen to. I, I was like, going by what people told me by interviews that I was doing. Who did you talk to? I talked to some of the guys that worked with him. Oh, uh, gangsters. Some of the mobsters. Yeah. Uh, wow. I talked to. I talked to. No, I but talked old to, guys now, right? Are they older old guys? Oh, yeah. geez. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. serious, like real old G's. Like and real old yeah. G's. Yeah, like it was Chisholm. Junebug, they all, like both were advising me, and then there was a man named Professor Smalls who took over the mosque when Malcolm left, and he was advising me. I had a lot of different people helping me, and it, it all started really from this guy Marquan Smith, who, who like uh, really had been close to the family and tried to push this project forward for 18 years, and wow. and, and I, I sort of got inside of that and started to push the story forward with him with, with these great writers like Chris Bracato and it just it just started to find itself. Did know? they tell you stories that well I obviously they told you things you didn't know, but stories about themselves that, that shocked you? You know what shocked me was, you know, we were talking about the sixties and it was like the best time of their lives. And they looked at it like with so much nostalgia as it was a moment to that uh, they could feel themselves, that they knew their strength, that they understood their power and that they were in control of their lives. Hmm. So it was really interesting. Uh, yeah, to a certain extent, I would imagine that, that there is an element of fun to that, being a part of something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's hard because, you know, the, the show really depicts, like, the difference between when he's trying to help the community and what he's doing to harm the community. Mm -hmm. And so trying to understand these two things about this world and this man and the people that I was dealing with is something that the show really touches on. The soundtrack is getting a lot of attention. Swiss Beats is... Your, yeah. Is he your music He's director? A music producer. He's, producer, he, yeah. He, uh, created like, uh, I don't know, maybe two songs for every show that we do, actually. Every episode, there's like two new songs that come out because we try to get the music to feel the heartbeat of the day, but still like be about the issues of what we were looking at in the show, which is about the opiate crisis. It deals with uh, issues of um, polarity, you know, like of the power struggles between black and white and, and the have and have nots. We tried to deal with. Uh, so many different issues, and you know, Black Lives Matter issues, 
you know, Me Too issues. It's a lot of things that happen inside of the show, in the inner working, in the fabric of, of the emotions of the show. Swiss Beats got uh, DMX is involved in the music. Who else? Who are you some of the DMX, other artists? Uh, Rick Ross. Uh, Rick Ross, yeah. Of course, himself, uh, uh, Ferg. Um, we got uh, Dave East, uh, Jandena, uh, just, just a um, buddy. There's a lot of different artists. I, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of people writing about the soundtrack. Uh, it's amazing from, from soundtrack. This. You, uh, speaking of kind of classic movie soundtracks, Mm. Fast Times at Ridgemont High, was that the first movie, big, well, certainly big movie, that you did? It was. It was. Yeah. And wh how old were you when you made that movie? I was about, I guess I was 19. So you were just out of high school. Yeah. Were you in college at the I time? I was in college. Mm -hmm. Classmates were Ali Sheedy and Anthony Edwards and Eric Stoltz and those guys. Wow. Yeah. And, of course, Sean Penn played Spicoli in, in <laughs> that. <laughs> and he, uh, yeah, and he, he wrecked your car, as I recall. What was... What was a young Sean Penn like working with Sean at that time? He was really uh, into the character, like totally, you know, he's at the method approach. Oh. So I remember one time him and my brother, the kid who played my brother, were standing behind me. They were like having this long discussion about how they were going to steal my bag, you know? And I was like, are these guys serious? What's going on? <laughs> oh, and this is off camera. Yeah. <laughs> I had nothing to do with anything we were doing. I didn't have any scenes with Sean whatsoever. I'm going to steal my bag and run. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, really? Wow. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Do you ever go back and look at that movie? I see it sometimes. It plays. It's kind of a classic for that. I, I would think so. Yeah. Did you go back to college after that, or did you say, all right, well, I'm in the movies now? No. I, you know what? I didn't feel like I was good enough to be a film. I did that already. And, so I wanted to go away. So I actually left Los Angeles. I was in conservatory here, went up north so that I could study some more so I could get better at my craft before I actually got put permanently on film. So it was a different kind of thing. Wow. Well, it's great to have you here. Forrest Whitaker, everybody. Godfather of Harlem. Sunday nights, 9 p.m. on Epics. We'll be right back with Black Pumas. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you want to see all our latest videos, click the subscribe button. And if you don't, click anyway and close your eyes when they come on.